Hello, UGCS pilots. My name is Dimitri, and today's webinar will be about telemetry player. We've got a lot of questions what a telemetry player can be used for. So right now, I'll briefly go over the interface and tell you about the features. Well, telemetry player is a handy tool for flight tracking, exporting to third-party software, and services, and other useful needs. This is a telemetry player, as you see here. The interface consists of timeline, or play speed. Let's play something so you can see it. The play speed can be increased to two, four, or eight X of the original one. The time scale, you can zoom in and out. And a VO and a timeline movement. Now, to add vehicle, you press add vehicle to layout. I don't have any more vehicles because they're all added. Uh, vehicle card. Choose the vehicle you want to see and click on it. Clear all telemetry button. It will delete all the telemetry telemetries for the particular vehicle. Show telemetry window, which is what, were, what was going on with the drone while flying. Show camera footprint. It will show where the camera was facing when the drone flew the road. And vehicle cord geotagging which is what you see here. Now, geotagging is pretty useful in case if your camera does not record geotagging in EXIF data. You can use this function to write geolocation to all the photos taken during the flight. Uh, select, select the folder, browse for pictures, select all, select all the pictures. I won't do that in live because that's some, it's kind of time consuming but I'll explain what, what it's used for. Well, now, you'll need to offset the local time, which is on your computer, and the time on your camera. Uh, I mean, absolute synchronization is not possible at all. For instance, uh, the time on your computer is 6 p.m., which is right now, and the camera offset could be like, 605 or something. You'll need to set the time in seconds, which is which is the difference different from from your camera. Uh, for instance, if your camera has like two or three seconds going faster forward, you add three seconds. Or if it's slower, you add minus three seconds, or so on. When you browsed, or or also you can set UTC time zone if it's different different in your camera. Browse for the file photos. As I said, select all, select Adam, and press process. After processing, you can uh, press right, right tags to image file. So all the pictures will have. Altitude, longitude, latitude, and so on. Now to the telemetry window. Here is the telemetry tracks. Everything that's being flown. You can use search bar to search for the particular tracks on the particular date. You can see the tracks for selected vehicle only. 
like I see uh, I have Mavic 2 Enterprise here or Mavic Zoom, you can switch between them. And if you have this check mark on, it will show only the tracks for the particular vehicle. You can pin a specific track to the ground, or you can pin a lot of some of them. You can merge tracks. Or, or you can split tracks, also delete them. Oh, by the way, the logs here, it'll show all the messages the drone was showing during the actual flight. We have an import and export option. You can export to TLM, which is an internal format. You can export to CSV, as an Excel format without logs. You can export to KML for third-party apps and services, Google Maps, Air Data, etc. In case if you've flown a drone manually, the telemetry well, ride this road and you can export it to KML, for instance. And let's assume, let's assume this road was flown manually. So I'll export it to TLM. Exporting to TLM. And then going to Mission Editor and importing it. Import from file, browse, select programmetry. Next. Next. This is the road I've flown as a waypoint. Now, here's another thing, image center. Once you have flown uh, a mission, you can check if there was, there is a missing pictures. So you go to map, map options, show image centers, find all the pictures taken, all select, close. This was the mission flown some time ago and all these blue pins indicate uh, the place where pictures were taken. So if you hover a mouse over it, you'll see an altitude, latitude, and longitude. Well, it's gonna be a pretty brief webinar Hope you liked it. Hope it was understandable. It'll be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. Let me know if you have any questions. My colleagues should have answered some of them online. Post your questions, thank you. Uh, is there a way to bypass the two kilometer range? It's a DGI limitation, I guess. There is no way to do that. Here's the question. How accurate it is when it comes close to the power station, antennas, or trees? It depends on the drone's like, accuracy. Will the webinar be available on UGCS website later? 
yes, it's going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel. The telemetry has been written to internal database, which is located uh, for Windows. It's uh, C users, username, app data, local, UGCS, DB, SQLite. Well, thank you very much for watching. The rest of your questions will be answered later and published on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.